Well guys, the situation with the truckers deciding not to deliver goods to New York City shows us just how confusing things can get with wrong information spreading online. This message is to all the truckers who are boycotting New York. Keep it up, keep up the good work. Social media is spreading disinformation by putting out false statements that the boycott of the truckers is petering out when in fact it's growing stronger. Now, my question for you guys, number one is, do you stand with the truckers? Now, people who live in New York, in New York City, people are living in New York City, they're speaking out. Truckers who typically drive to New York City, they're speaking out too. And you may be shocked as to what they're saying. Also, there's this theory that the legal challenges, including the $355 million civil penalty case that former President Donald Trump is facing within New York City's court system could unexpectedly blow up. I mean, it could literally blow up in the faces of President Joe Biden, New York City District Attorney uh, Letitia James, Judge Ergonon, uh, former or uh, current Fulton County, Georgia District Attorney Fannie Willis. And we'll, we'll get to Fannie, Fannie Willis, who was elected as a DA, in Fulton County, Georgia, primarily because she's black, in my opinion. And pretty much all the Democrats that are backing this ruling. So I'm gonna get into all of that later in this video, but before I do, all I ask from you guys is drop a quick like for the video. It only takes a second. And I just wanna thank you guys so much for always sharing my videos. I totally appreciate you guys. And it really does help out the channel. So first, here's what's happening. Some people on the internet are saying that fewer and fewer truckers are joining the boycott, suggesting that Trump's, you know, truckers for Trump is losing power. But actually, many truckers and their supporters are arguing the exact opposite, saying that more truckers are joining the protest every single day. In fact, the clash of stories is a very clear example of how misinformation online can really mess with the understanding is the understandings of big events and it makes you wonder who's driving the narrative now the decision by these independent truckers to not deliver goods to new york it's a striking example of collective action and we've seen collective action from truckers with the uh, trucker convoy taking place in uh, Texas, going across the United States, all across America about two weeks ago, heading down to uh, Texas to address the uh, border crisis, the U.S.-Mexico border crisis at the southern border of the United States. Uh, there were numbers estimated to be about 700,000 truckers involved in that thing. You had the uh, trucker convoy uh, that originally took place in Washington, D.C., and of course, the Canadian trucker convoy a couple years back. Now, again, you know, despite their uh, these truckers independence and the absence of a centralized organizing body like a uh, like as if you were in a union or something like that, uh, these drivers, all of these truck drivers, independent operators or whatnot, they've come together through Twitter, thanks to Chicago Ray and many others in essentially a unified protest. Uh, you know, so basically the trucker's collective decision to boycott loads and deliveries to New York, it really just kind of acts as like a powerful statement about the grievances and the concerns about former President Donald Trump and the ultimate verdict uh, to the court trial, which District Attorney Letitia James was able to convince a judge to hit Trump with a $355 million civil penalty lawsuit uh, due in full within 30 days, by the way, with roughly $100,000 per day in interest. I think it's more like $87,000, $88,000 a day in interest for every day he doesn't pay. Some people don't even make $88,000 a year, let alone per day. Anyway, the truckers boycott against New York really kind of highlights this like really compelling aspect of the American workforce, particularly the, the role of independent truck drivers. I mean, these individuals, numbering approximately 350,000 operate in a, in a unique sector of the economy where they're their own bosses. They're free from the direct oversight of corporations and the collective bargaining processes typically associated with unions. Now, of course, there are some truck drivers that work for companies, but there's a lot of owner operators out there and they're just refusing loads. Now, the situation involving New York Attorney General Letitia James and former President Donald Trump represents a very complex legal and political scenario. 
and it's garnered widespread views and opinions on this thing. I mean, many believe that the outcome of this particular trial, which literally has been an egregious display of targeted perse persecution against Trump, ultimately robbing former President Donald Trump of approximately $400 million through the use of the legal system. Letitia James has been essentially at the forefront of the legal actions against Trump, which some critics argue rep represents an overreach of her authority, which I, I digress on that. But critics contend that some of these actions, they're not merely just legal challenges, but they're actually politically motivated efforts aimed at undermining Trump's image and political viability. In other words, they know that Trump will boot uh, President Biden out of office come November. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to bump Trump out of the race so that President Biden will end up competing against Nikki Haley instead of President Donald Trump or former President Donald Trump, because Biden knows. And I think that most of the Democratic Party realizes that Biden probably won't win against Donald Trump. So if they can bump Donald Trump out of the race and basically by default put Nikki Haley in place of Donald Trump, they have a better chance at winning. And so anyway, that's that's kind of the theory behind this thing. Now, one of the most intriguing aspects of this whole legal battle is that the actions taken by Letitia James, they could inadvertently aid Trump's political comeback. They could literally blow up in the face <laughs> in the face of, you know, the, the faces of President Joe Biden, Letitia James, Judge Ungranon and, and the Democrats by by portraying Trump as a target of political persecution. And I think black men sense that and they know that Trump relates to them. They relate to Trump very well. This might ultimately galvanize his base and attract some of the independents and undecided voters that are sympathetic of Trump's claims of unfair treatment. So literally, I mean, think about it. I forget how Trump normally puts it, but he usually says something like, you know, hey, they're coming after me now and they're they're coming after you later. Right. So if they can do this to Trump, just imagine they can do this to the average American. And this this dynamic that we're witnessing here in 2024, February 2024, we, the, the year is still new. The dynamic really kind of underscores the complex interplay between, you know, legal actions and unintended political consequences. And we're about to see, we're, we're really about to see this thing unfold. Now, the critique basically kind of goes beyond this immediate legal battle to encompass some broader debates about some fairness and equality before the law. Now, observers have pointed out that the perceived inconsistencies and in, in how legal standards, st legal standards are applied that Trump, they're arguing that Trump and his family, they have been subjected to a level of legal scrutiny not applied to other political figures. I mean, look at Biden. Look at Biden. Look at Hunter Biden. Look at Joe Biden. The Biden family has had headline after headline, evidence after evidence piling up against them. Where are the charges? Do you see any of these people uh, sitting in court receiving half a billion dollar fines coming after them? Uh, mug shots being taken. So anyway, so the whole perception, it really just kind of feeds into this larger discussion about bias within the justice system. And of course, the potential for legal processes to, to be influenced by political considerations. And Democrats are concerned that if uh, former President Donald Trump wins this thing, he's going to go in there, he's going to clean house. There's going to be a lot of people out of a job. There are going to be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of movement that will come to a complete halt. He will change the policies at the southern border. There will be significant change to the United States if former President Donald Trump wins. So Democrats are literally pulling out all the stops uh, to make sure that this doesn't happen. Beyond that, there's a narrative of resilience. There's this defiance against perceived injustices. Like, you know, it kind of resonates with a significant portion of the American electorate if you think about it, right? The idea that Trump could face significant financial penalties, it, it, it you know, just kind of like really, it definitely speaks volumes to the unique nature of this particular appeal and, and, and the depth of his base. And the thing is, is the more he gets dragged through the mud, the more people are kind of sympathetic of the guy. So it's kind of like, you know, is this plan really going to work for the Democrats or not? Now, 
It also highlights the strategic calculations that are involved in legal and political battles, like where the implications extend way beyond the courtroom. Now, you got the assertion that James said that no one is above the law. It kind of encapsulates this principle that a lot of people would agree with in theory, yet the application of the principles were the division arise, basically, right? Critics argue that the mantra that has been widely selectively, you know, reinforcing concerns about the objectivity and the fairness of the justice system, but yet they're still coming after Trump only, right? Now, the legal confrontations between Letitia James and Donald Trump, they're not just about the specific legal issues at hand. This is way deeper than that, right? Now, I want to ask you guys something. Did y'all see that Newsweek article? So, uh, real quick, um, basically it says something like, uh, here it is, pro-Trump truckers warned New York City boycott would hand their jobs to immigrants. Um, and this got a lot of people up in arms here. So pro-truck Trump, uh, Trumpers, uh, <laughs> pro-truck, pro-Trump truckers calling for a boycott of New York City after the former president's fraud ruling has faced new criticism online with many warning that their jobs will be replaced by immigrants if they uh, go through with their threats. Um, on Friday, New York City Judge uh, Arthur Ergonon ruled that Trump must pay $355 million in penalties uh, in the civil fraud case brought to him against um, brought against him by New York Attorney General Letitia James. The suit accused Trump and others of fraudulently inflating his net worth, which, by the way, according to Forbes, uh, Trump's net worth is sitting at around two point six billion dollars. Not really sure how accurate that figure is, but according to Forbes, that's the number that they're putting out there. The value of his assets to uh, secure more favorable business loans, which uh, Ingranon uh, found him liable for last year. Trump has also been barred from uh, serving as an officer or director uh, for any business in New York State for the next three years. Trump has maintained his innocence throughout the proceedings. So now, um, now in response to the ruling, a number of Trump social media users began using uh, urging truckers to boycott New York City by refusing to accept routes into it and potentially disrupt the New York City economy. Um, yeah, so. Uh, let's see. I think. Yeah. So this is a quote from Chicago Ray, which I shared with you guys previously. Uh, but they're they're basically trying to make the argument here that uh, that if truck drivers don't drive into New York City, uh, migrants may end up taking those opportunities away. So here it goes. It says uh, in the days after uh, for a, in the days after calls for a New York City boycott began trending on social media, other more critical users took to platforms like they call it X. It will forever to me be Twitter uh, to warn that such a tactic might ultimately produce a result likely to frustrate pro MAGA truckers. Their jobs could be taken by immigrants that are willing to do the work. Now, anyway, 